it was quite an emotional experience for me at times as Jean-Luc when we meet him in season two. Jean-Luc is back in the chateau, Chateau Picard. He's alone, but he is being cared <laughs> for by Laris. But is he happy? I don't think Jean-Luc is sentimental. But he is exposed to memories he cannot control. It's about how a certain turmoil within him gets stirred up and what the outcomes of that is. I am very happy to be Chancellor of the Academy. Thank you very much. At the start of season two, we find Rafi has gone back to Starfleet. She's now actually teaching. She's uh, got her eye on her favorite cadet. The first fully Romulan cadet at Starfleet Academy, Elnor. At the start of season two, we find Elnor in Starfleet Academy. Rafi, who's, you know, kind of like a mentor to him as well as like a mother figure. She's really taken him under her wing and, you know, she's kind of just been helping him navigate life within the academy. I think he's grown quite a bit. He's still learning things. He's still kind of that like awkward kid, but I'd say he's more phasing out of that process. At the beginning of season two, Seven has rejoined the Rangers, the Fenris Rangers. She's the captain of La Serena, and she's uh, battling some pirates when we first encounter her. <laughs> Assisted by one of the holographic versions of Rios on La Serena. <laughs> she's deactivated the rest of them because they annoyed her. <laughs> At the end of season one, we did see a little um, glimpse of the beginnings of a relationship between Seven and Rafi. You know, it's a bit of a time cut. Seven's off with the Rangers. Rafi's, I think, feeling a little left out. Because Rafaela has had some crutches that she's leaned on in the past of her addictions, she's vulnerable. That might be challenging for someone as strong and as uh, self-assured as Seven. For a number of reasons, I think. Maybe too much, too close, too, too human. Is that something that Seven grapples with? It's definitely not, um, you know, a uh, white picket fence and uh, uh, a fairy tale. We've been touring the galaxy for over a year since the Federation ended the ban on synthetics. At the top of season two, we find Gerardi and Soji sort of doing a diplomatic tour of the universe. You can't ask for trust through an interpreter. It needs to come from here. Trying to, um, you know, speak about how these AI creatures are um, awesome. <laughs> as this kind of synthetic emissary. She's making connections with planets all over and just to kind of ensure everyone like synthetics are okay. We are, we are good people and we want to enter the universe and the Federation. We want to be a part of you guys and we are, we're good people. <laughs> I know, Rio's called, you're going. I'm staying here to continue being charmingly diplomatic. Rio's this season is uh, very much, much a case of uh... Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. What else but on, a, on the Stargazer, one of the most iconic ships. So, what's the big hurry, Captain? Shove that, there's no time. Give me a sec. It goes in line with who Rios is. He doesn't want a light job. He doesn't want something that's gonna be easy. Some kind of subspace anomaly Starfleet sorted us to investigate. I could use you on this one. If he's gonna do it, he's gonna go for something that's, uh, that's kind of a challenge. I imagine that he took this job on to have a different kind of closure with Starfleet. Like, he wanted to write a different history. Admiral on the bridge. Season two was not looking so much at Picard's past, but at his present and what he sees as a possible future. It's just a nice feeling to be back. I can't wait for them to see season two.